the first attitude that I have noticed among many, many Muslims, uh, and before I noticed it in anyone else, it was actually an attitude that I had myself. So I know that it exists because it's personal. Is that the Qur'an is not relevant. That the Qur'an is not talking about my life. It's talking about something that happened a long time ago. The people that I know that talk about the Qur'an look like they belong 500 years ago. They don't look like modern people. Uh, these people when they speak, they speak in a way that nobody else speaks. My friends don't talk like this. My colleagues at work don't talk like this. My, my professors at school don't talk like this. As soon as, and it, as a matter of fact, you could be friends with a khatib. And when you're talking to them, they talk to you perfectly normally. But as soon as they get up on the mimbar, they talk differently. They talk like there's, they belong in a different time. And it becomes almost disconnected from you. So the first impression I had of religious conversation, Qur'an, Sunnah, the whole bit, the whole thing, was that this does not belong in this time. This is some old thing. And this is for people that are old-minded. They're not, you cannot have this religion and live in modern times. You cannot combine those two things. It's impossible. That's number one. And as a matter of fact, even in so many lectures that I heard, all they talked about was how bad these times are and how good the old times used to be. That's all they talk about. Is these times are very bad and old times were very, very good. And so I say to myself, well, old times are over. So I guess it's bad now. So what's the point? <laughs> That's the first problem. The second problem I noticed, again, something I noticed in myself, and then I noticed it in now millions of other people, is that this religion and this book is extremely strict, and it's harsh, and it's difficult, and it has rules that are not easy. The rules of this book, the guidelines of this book, that it tells you to do some things that you're not supposed to do, or it, it forbids you from some things, or it commands you to other things, but its rules are too many, and too heavy, and too difficult, and basically impractical. You can't do it. You just can't do it. If you have to do it, you have to be a very extreme person. You cannot be a normal, happy person, and do these rules. As a matter of fact, the more religious you get, the more depressed you get, and the more angry you get, and the more angry you look. So all the religious people I know are really angry people. So I don't want to be like that, so that must be because of this religion. This religion is harsh, so it makes people harsh. It makes people difficult. It makes people very angry. As a matter of fact, in my own life, before I turned to the deen of Allah, I was born a Muslim, but you know, you know how it is. If I saw a guy with a beard, I ran the other way. I do not want to be around those guys, because they keep telling me how I'm going to hell. Or they're just going to tell me to do something like, go make salat. Or, hey brother, why do you have this? Why are you, why are you dressed like that? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you... Stop. I don't want to talk to you. Just leave me alone. Let me eat pizza. You know? You're, you're sitting there relaxing, eating your pizza. The guy with the beard walks into the restaurant. You're like, oh God. I was enjoying my meal. This guy had to come in here. You know? So the, the religion is harsh, and people that follow the religion are also harsh. That was the second attitude. The third attitude was that every time I hear, or at least most of the times when I heard people talk about the deen of Allah, they did not tell me why I should be Muslim. They did not tell me why I should be Muslim. They only told me that I should be Muslim. Here's what you should do. And if I said, why should I do it? Is that because you're going to burn in hell if you don't do it? Why should I believe I shall burn in hell? Don't question why you should believe you will burn in hell. You're a kafir if you question. You have doubts? You don't have iman? And if you go to the, the person who gave you that lecture and you say to them, so how do we know, how do we know for sure that this is the right religion? How do we know? I mean, there's so many religions in the world. How do we know that we have the right religion? The shaykh will tell you, and he told me, you son, you need to make wudu, and you make, need to make two rak'ah, because you're getting muswasa from shaitan. After I make wudu, and I make two rak'ah, I still have the same question. 
why are we following this religion? Every time I ask that question, people say, Astaghfirullah al-Azim, how can you ask that question? You're not supposed to ask that question. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi. Do your parents know about this? Akhil Kareem, sit down, sit down. Let me do some ruqya on you. <laughs> but then after the ruqya is done, I still have the same question. So you know what I started thinking? And millions of young people around the world started thinking? These people don't have an answer to that question. These people, number one, they want you to live like you live, that this, they don't want you to live in 2015, they want you to live in 1275. They want you to live in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. That was number one, it's irrelevant for this time. Number two, they're extremely harsh. And number three, they don't want to answer my questions. They think my questions are evil. These three reasons are enough, more than enough, for someone to want nothing to do with Islam. If you have these three concerns, and you want nothing to do with Islam, I appreciate that, I understand. It's logical. And I can tell you, with a good degree of confidence, I have not been to any country in the world, Muslim, or non-Muslim, where there are not people who think exactly like this. For all the people who come and sit in a lecture, there are hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people, Muslim and non-Muslim, who have this problem. They have this problem. And so this is what I noticed for so long. And I stayed away from the Qur'an for so long in my life, for one reason. It doesn't have to do with my time. It's harsh. It's not going to answer my questions. How are my questions? I have questions. I went to college in New York City. I took a philosophy class. And in philosophy class, and in psychology class, and in anthropology class, when, I've, when I'm studying Freud, when I'm studying you know, evolution, when I'm studying you know, modern European philosophy, how is a book 1400 years ago going to answer my questions? Come on, seriously? It's not going to have answers to my questions, you know. So I have no reason to go to this book. But by the gift of Allah, for no other reason, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ When I did stumble upon the book of Allah, when I st did start to decide to try to understand the book of Allah, and I was fortunate enough to find some incredible, incredible teachers, I realized all three of those things were untrue. The book is incredibly relevant. The book has answers to my questions and my problems and my personal problems today. Forget about society's problems and the world's problems. That's, second, that's stage two and stage three. I'm talking stage one, my personal problems. It has answers. The second issue was it's harsh. The more I studied the book, I realized people are harsh, but the book is not harsh. <coughs> Allah sent the book as a rahmah, but we don't have rahmah. So when we talk about the book, we talk about the book, but we take out the rahmah. <laughs> That's what we do. Allah's book doesn't do that, we do that. Okay, we're intolerant. We're intolerant. And well, I'll talk about that a little bit later, some more. And then the third problem was that it, you know, people don't want to answer my questions. I have questions and they say, Astaghfirullah, this is from shaitan. But the Qur'an says, Hatu burhanakum, in kuntum sadiqeen. The Qur'an is inviting people to ask questions and bring their criticisms. Which religion in the world says, please, criticize? No other religion other than Islam. Please, we would invite you to question and criticize this book. فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ بِالدُّونِ اللَّهِ I'm reading this and I'm saying, how can a book do that? I thought this book is supposed to tell me, just believe. And if you don't believe, you will burn. But this book says, no, think for yourself. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ No other religion tells you to think. Actually, every other religion tells you, stop thinking and just believe. Stop thinking and just believe. And this book says, you cannot stop thinking. You have to think, and if you think, only then you will believe. There's no other religion like that. We keep talking about doing da'wah to non-Muslims. I am here to tell you, the ummah itself is disconnected from the Qur'an. And actually a lot of times, 
when the people are hearing about the Qur'an, they are hearing a message that is harsh, that is irrelevant, and that does not answer their questions, even though the Qur'an answers the questions, the person presenting it doesn't present it that way. And so we are misrepresenting, or under, no, let's not say misrepresenting, we are under-representing the Book of Allah. We are under-representing the Book of Allah. That is the problem that I see before me. That's the challenge of our time. That to me is the biggest challenge of our time. Things are said about the ayat of Allah. The easy, it's easy to quote an ayah of Qur'an. Very easy. It's not difficult. And it's also extremely easy to misuse an ayah of the Qur'an. It's very easy. And people do it. And you know what? Sometimes people misuse the ayat of Qur'an and innocent people die. This Qur'an, if you misuse it, it will not just create fasad on the earth. It will create, you know, وَيَسْ فِيكُدْ دِمَا The angels had a concern. It will spill blood. The Qur'an can be used or misused to spill blood. And it's happening. The Qur'an can be misused to push people away from Islam. It's happening. It's happening in our time. People are reciting, the people that are talking about Qur'an, they're talking about it in a way that even the Muslim says, I don't want Islam anymore. I want to walk away from it. This is the tragedy of our time. Now, that was the tragedy part. I'm going to stop talking about the tragedy now. You heard enough about the tragedy. Now I'm going to start over. Wallahu anzala min as Allah, in fact, He is the one that sent water from the sky. Allah is talking about rain, yes? Now bear with me. فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا Then He gave life to the earth. After the earth was what? The earth was dead. Allah gave life to the earth after the earth was dead. What did Allah use to give life to the earth? Water. In the example, Allah gave water to the earth. And that, that way the dead earth comes back to life. Without the rain, does this planet survive? This planet cannot survive without rain. That is the life of this planet. Everybody clear about that? Okay, now let's move forward. يُنْبِتُ لَكُمْ بِهِ الزَّرْعُ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَالنَّخِيلُ وَالْأَعْنَابُ وَمِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ Both of these ayat belong to Surah An-Nahl. Allah produces for you, by using the water, Allah produces two kinds of things. Let me categorize two kinds of things. On the one hand, you have farm, and palm trees, and grapes. These things don't grow by themselves. You have to take care of those trees, and you have to grow a farm. A farm does not happen by itself. You have to put a lot of work into a farm for it to grow properly. You understand? So now when Allah says all kinds of fruits, when He says all kinds of fruits, now if you go into like the South, South American jungles, or you go into Afri- the Africas, will you see all kinds of fruits on the trees? Yeah, all kinds of fruits. But th- are there farmers in those jungles? No, it goes on its own. What Allah is telling us is, He sends water from the sky, and when he sends water from the sky, there is some kind of fruits or vegetation that people have to farm. You have to take care of those plants. Unless you take care of them, they will not grow. And then there are some plants and some fruits that will grow on their own with no effort from you. That's out in the wild, yes? Two kinds of life on the earth come out from the rain. You understand the point so far? Okay. But actually, remarkably, the ayah that I shared with you, Wallahu anzala mina sama'i ma'an, is not actually about the water and the sky. That's its second purpose. Its primary purpose is dictated by the ayah that came before it. And the ayah that came before it is, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا لِتُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ أَلَّذِ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ The previous ayah says, Allah sent the book from the sky. In the next ayah, he said, Allah sent the water from the sky. So if you want to understand the effect of the book of Allah on the earth, if you want to understand the effect of the book of Allah on the earth, you have to understand the effect of water on the earth. You understand? Now, what does water do? Water brings life to the earth. Is it essential for the survival of the earth? Yes. So, if... The water is essential for the survival of the earth. 
the book of Allah properly delivered to all the places that are morally dead, that are spiritually dead. It has to be delivered properly, because rain has to come properly, especially to the places that are dead. It has to go to those places, and even if they have been dead for centuries, it will bring them back to life. So no matter how bad the situation is, no matter how dead the earth is, when water can bring the earth back to life, no matter how bad the political situation of the world is, no matter how bad the moral situation of the world is, how, no matter how bad the media is in any day and age, no matter how low the Muslims have become, this book has the power to bring people back to life. It has the power to do that. You understand? But when the water comes down, when the water comes down, there are two kinds of plants. Plants that grow on their own, and plants that you have to what? Are there people in the world that we ne I never met them. I never met them. I just made a YouTube video. And then they come to me and say, hey, I used to be Christian. I saw your video, I became Muslim. Then I told my family, and they became Muslim. Can we take a picture with you? I was like, yeah, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> Did I do anything with them? No, that was the word of Allah, somehow reaching them, and they on their own grew. Yes? That is not because of our effort, that is because Allah grows in iman in the heart of whoever He wants. All I had to do was do a little bit, little bit, but Allah will spread it Himself. On the one hand, people will come on their own to Islam like wild fruits. And they're amazing. They're amazing people. But that does not mean da'wah is happening, because we didn't do the farming. On the other side, there is the farm, yes? Now let me tell you something else, very interesting. Allah gives these analogies, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ Examples are critical in the Qur'an. Examples are a fundamental of the Qur'an. Now, farming. Did you know that human civilization, human beings, in the study of anthropology, human civilization, the first act of human civilization was farming. And the argument is humanity would not have survived as a civilization, we could have survived in caves or woods or something, but as a civilization with cities and countries and infrastructure, none of that would have happened if we did not farm. And farming would never have happened if we did not deliver a means of uh, 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 irrigation, of channeling water. If you don't figure out how to channel water, you cannot farm. And if you cannot farm, you will not have civilization. Is that an important thing to understand in this conversation? If we don't understand how to deliver Qur'an, and if we don't understand how to cultivate people, then the Muslim civilization will cease to exist. It will die. Have previous nations that were given a book died before us? They have. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. The only thing is, if we don't do this job, Allah wants this job to get done. So if you are no good, in tatawallaw, yastabdil qawman ghayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. If you turn away, He will just replace you with some other people, and they won't be, I'll use Urdu, they won't be nikamme like you. They won't be useless like you. They'll actually do the job. If we don't do our job, Allah does not need us. Wallahu al-ghani wa antum al-fuqara. You don't do your job, Allah will replace you.